Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy Michael here. Hope you're enjoying your quarantine. So, as you know, I've made several videos over wireless charging and you may be wondering, why do you do that, Michael? And why do you have a mustache? Well, first of all, deal with it. But, uh, so, I've made several videos over wireless charging projects that I've done, so, uh, such as my wireless charging cell phone stand, my wireless charging headphone stand, and my uh, car mount. But I've never actually gone into detail about how a wireless charger works. And wireless chargers are really such a simple yet complex circuit that I think really deserves a lot of, a lot of attention because it seems to be the future for a lot of things. So uh, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you exactly how a wireless charger works. I'm gonna be breaking it down capacitor by capacitor, diode by diode, and then I'm gonna be showing you exactly how to make one of yourself and then some things you can potentially do to improve my design so that if you want to make something of your own you can do something maybe not necessarily using this circuit but using a circuit of your own that you've made so without further ado let's get to the video so essentially a wireless charger is just a transformer in fact in a lot of cases it's called a virtual transformer and that's because it exhibits the same characteristics as a transformer, but it doesn't do any of that step down stuff where it's taking like 110 volts from the wall and converting that to 12 volts. It doesn't do any of that stuff, but the characteristics that it exhibits is it takes the uh, current from one end of a coil then through mutual inductance, meaning two inductors are placed next to each other. It sends an electromagnetic field over to the other inductor, and then you have mutual inductance and you have a transformer. And so another area that you might uh, deal with when it comes to transformers is uh, turns ratios. Um, that's not as big of a thing here, but it's actually the reverse. You would use a trans, you would use turn ratios to increase the amount of voltage and current going through. And so we're going to get into that a little bit later in the video. But turns ratios are used a little bit differently in this case. So essentially, what a wireless charger does is you take a DC voltage. So in this case, I used 12 volt DC. From my battery that I have uh, and then it converts it over into an AC signal with a very very high frequency oscillations in order to produce the uh, electromagnetic field that's needed for the uh, for the uh, transmitter coil and then it sends that over to the receiver coil which then rectifies that voltage and then through a system of filters sent through these you know it's now DC voltage over here, and then it sends that over to your phone through a five volt regulated source. So there are three very important parts of a wireless charger that pretty much make up all of it. There's the transmitter, there's the copper coil, and then there's a the receiver. So the transmitter and the coil are probably the most difficult and most important parts of this circuit. So essentially what I did here, and I'm gonna leave a link in the description for um, this circuit diagram, uh, I want to thank Theory Circuit for um, at least the general idea, but uh, so essentially what the transmitter circuit is, is this is just a very simple LC circuit um, and the L part or the inductor part is the uh, copper coil. And so I calculated the inductance of these coils, um, 10 inch, you know, you know, 10 turns with a two inch diameter. Uh, it produces about 0.231 micro Henry's. And then all of these capacitors are sitting at 10 nanofarads. And so uh, that equates to 3.3 megahertz frequency. So uh, these need very, very high frequencies in order to uh, transmit a lot of current going through. And so the transmitter essentially needs an oscillator, but you can't just use any normal oscillator like an op amp oscillator or something like that because um, you have a lot of changing fields, a lot of changing uh, you know, your mutual inductance changes constantly, magnetic flux, all of these different things um, that an op amp would just blow up. So you need a switching circuit. And so in this case, I used a uh, power MOSFET. So I've seen a lot of online circuits using BJTs. You can do that. It's, it's good for current, but it also wastes a lot of current. Um, so I would recommend not using a BJT if you can but you, you can still do it if you want to use it for switching. It's just BJTs aren't amazing for switching. So I used a power MOSFET over here, an IRF520. You can also use an IRF540, which is another common uh, power MOSFET I've seen being used for this application. 
And so you has you have this switching between these different capacitors. I mean, you have this resistor over here, obviously, to produce the the uh, uh, frequency. Um, but uh, so we have a frequency of 3.3 megahertz, and then you have your current from your transmitter circuit uh, flowing in this direction, and then your receiver coil is flowing in this direction. Now, you'll also notice that these coils, or the transmitter coil specifically, is center tapped. And the reason why you'd want to have that is that you want um, there to be an appropriate step up voltage. Um, you really want as much voltage going into the receiver circuit as possible because there's so much wasted current. Um, and so I have this center tapped. You don't really have to have it center tapped, but I center tapped it and you know, a lot of transformers are, are center tapped. So that's what I did. So, um, so you have this, you have the current flowing this way, you have your receiver circuit going this way. And so once the current uh, reaches a good enough distance, then you have an electromagnetic field that is sent over from this into this. So, uh, for the copper coils, turns ratios are a little bit important. Um, this is just a normal one-to-one -one turns ratio. Um, a little bit later in the video, we're going to kind of be playing around with that a little bit and seeing what tur the turns ratios actually does for it. Um, but another thing that's very important about these copper coils is the diameter of it and the physical size of the copper coils. So your copper coils are going to play a very, very huge role in uh, how much current you're going to get into your receiver circuit how much current you're going to get to charge your phone and if it's going to work. So knowing that you have current going into your, in, you have your AC going into your receiver circuit and then that's rectified into a DC voltage, which is then sent through a system of filters. Um, you don't have to have this many capacitors. I just did because um, that's just, that's just the best way that I found. Um, and then you have a 4.7 volt regulated supply and then you have that sent into your phone. The reason why you'd want to have a 4.7 volt or, or 5 volt regulator is because uh, your phone needs um, 5 volts. So typical, typical smartphone batteries need 5 volts to charge. And so you would use around you know a, a 4.7 volt regulator to do that. Um, but if you really don't want to use a diode, you can also use a LM7805 5 volt regulator. Um, but if you really want to be an electrical engineer about it and, and do things very manually, um, you can just use a diode and that should work just fine. So um, why don't we get into the actual building of the circuit and then I'll show you exactly how it works. Okay, so I have these two circuits built now from that circuit diagram that I showed you. So I have the transmitter circuit over here and the receiver circuit over here. So now anyone can just, you know, build a circuit from a circuit diagram, which, so I'm not going to get into how you build the circuit, but the important part is these copper coils. How do you make them look like this? You know, how do you make sure that everything is good and everything, you know, works well? So let's get into that. So first you're going to want about 20 gauge copper wire. So it doesn't really matter too much. Just make sure that your copper wire is consistent, but the bigger the size of the wire, um, just the more voltage that you're going to get through it. So I just used 20 gauge because it seemed about right. And then you're going to want something round so that you can maintain the consistent circle that goes around. And so doing that, we're going to make the transmitter coil. You're going to take this, wrap it around to one, two, three, four, five. So once you get to the fifth iteration, you're going to stop and you're going to center tap it like this. See that? You're going to take that and then you're going to continue to unravel your circuit or your copper coils. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So as you can tell, I did a very bad job, but that's really not that important. The important thing is getting your circles consistent. So once you've got that, all you need to do is just cut it. So I'm going to take some wire strippers, cut it here. 
And then you're going to find the two ends of this and then take some electrical tape or really any tape of that matter, but electrical tape is what I had at hand. Take it, wrap it. So you can see this looks very, very janky, but you can see that it looks very similar to this. So this is center tapped. This is two ends over here. So you're going to do the same process for the receiver circuit. So um, the only difference is you won't center tap it. You're just going to do 10 turns continuously. And then from there, you should be good with your copper coils. Okay, so I have my power source connected to my transmitter circuit now. We have our copper coils wound up. And so now watch what happens whenever these two go close together. You can see that the LED gets brighter. So that just means that the closer that the, the copper coil is to the other one, so the closer the transmitter is to the receiver, then the more voltage and the more current that is being transferred over into the receiver circuit. And so the brighter the LED is, that means that the more voltage is being transferred. So I'm gonna show you kind of a uh, realistic example. So you can see this multimeter, as I get it closer, then the voltage gets a lot higher. You can see that. And so that is wireless power transfer. So we're done with the video, right? Wrong, because we still need to test it out with different turns ratios. And let's see what happens when we try and use different copper coils, use play around with different things. And also we're gonna try and actually uh, charge a device using that. Okay, so now I have connected my transmitter coil is the same as it was before, but my receiver coil is now 20 turns with a three with a three inch diameter over here. So I used something a little bit different to wind, wind these, just this water bottle over here. So watch what happens whenever we get this close. So of course it still lights up the LED, but you can see that at a much further distance, this I'm, I'm having this at about two inch distance, it turns on the LED just fine. And so that's because that the wider the diameter of this is, then the further away that you can have this. But the size, meaning the 20 gauge wire actually is very important in this. So let's look at the multimeter. We can see that because we have more turns, so a turns ratio of one to two now, instead of one to one, you can see that the multimeter is reading 3.7, 3.8, 3.9 volts, almost four volts. Before it was reading only about 2.7 volts. And that's because the turns ratio is now one to two. So you're getting way more current traveling through these wires. And so that's basically the gist of how it works is that if you want more current, you want more voltage traveling through, you need to have a higher turns ratio. So it has a kind of a reverse, uh, reverse transformer effect where instead of stepping down the voltage, it steps up the voltage. So you can see that this LED turns on brightly. So I have all these other coils over here. I'm not really going to test them out because you can pretty much guess what happens, but let's test this out with an actual device. So now using the same circuit, you can see that I have my transmitter and my receiver but this time I have my Arduino here. So the thing about Arduinos is that they turn on at about 3.3 volts or they're regulated at about five volts, which is exactly what we need. And so connected to this Arduino is also this display and this uh, temperature sensor. This is coming in a future video, but watch what happens now whenever I connect these two together or put them close together. You can see that the Arduino starts to turn on. Not just that, but the LED, the uh, OLED display on this Arduino is turning on too. And you can see that it's showing the temperature and the humidity, which means that the temperature sensor is also working too. And so reading from our multimeter, it's about 3.7 volts right now, which is a little bit more than enough to turn on this Arduino. And so you can see that we were able to turn on a device. So realistically, if I wanted to, let's say, solder this circuit together and uh, make this this uh, Arduino turn on without a need of a, um, a of a wire, I could easily do that. I could just take my Arduino, set it down on a copper coil 
and I have it turn on whenever I don't want it to turn on anymore, I just remove it. So, and as you can see, there was a little bit of interference between the wire and this. So make sure that your connections are, are secure over here. But that is the gist of wireless charging. Now, I was not able to actually charge a cell phone with this because it wasn't enough voltage to, to uh, charge the cell phone. Cell phones need about 4.7 volts. I was not able to get that. But if you wanted to charge a cell phone, you would just have more turns. So maybe like a one to four turns ratio or one to five turns ratio. And that should be more than enough to charge a phone. And make sure your five volt regulators are still the same and everything works. But that is how wireless charging works, everyone. Well, with that, I hope you have a better understanding of wireless power transfer or wireless charging. And you can see why now I like it so much because it's a technology that's so simple yet so complex. And it's so amazing how it can be used to make our lives so much better just through convenience. And so uh, I'll make sure to leave lots of links in the description for where I found all of my sources, all of the information that I've said. Um, if you have any questions at all, if there are any projects that you want to do personally that you want to be inspired from this video, make sure to let me know. I'd love to help out. If there are any electrical engineers out there that uh, have any questions or um, have any uh, specific comments about you know, what I've said or if, if there's anything wrong that I've said, make sure to let me know. I'll pin those comments specifically. Uh, but if you would love to see me do more a project such as this one. I love electronics. I love technology. So um, I'd love to do more stuff with Arduinos and stuff like that. So uh, make sure to let me know that as well. So with that, I hope you're enjoying your quarantine content. You are staying indoors. You're staying safe. You're growing those stashes. And I will catch you in the next one. Peace out.